guys and um, welcome back to my channel. For today's video I'm gonna um, work on Sabrina some more because um, I know you all enjoy watching me work and I'm just gonna talk to you all about how I became an artist um, because it's something I'm always asked as well um, and how I sort of develop myself. Um, so a lot of people ask um, have I always been into art, um, and if I'm self-taught and all that. Um, so I've always been into art, um, ever since I was little I've always been the one that's drawing constantly, um, and I've had horses from a very young age as well, so horses were always my main subject, I was always trying to draw horses. Um, so it is something that I've done for a very long time, but it's always been sort of like outline drawings or um, I try to do like cartoon horses mostly. Um, I don't know if any of you are familiar with farewell ponies. I was always trying to draw like animated um, farewell kind of ponies or like cartoon ponies or like funny things because I found trying to draw a realistic horse way too hard. So that's what I did through my childhood. Um, I was always arty through school. Um, I took art, GCSE, and graphic design um, as well, and I always excelled in them. Um, art was always my strong subject. But um, after school I did go to art college, um, but it more focused on like the um, technology side. There was very rarely any actual teaching of how to draw. Um, the first year was like basics of design and then the second year was graphic design and it was all like logo designing um, and like designing um, book covers and it was very we did have life drawing lessons um, but we were sort of just put in front of our subject and told to draw it we were never really taught any techniques and I definitely wasn't taught anything about colour pencils um, so when I left college, um, I sort of, like, I didn't want to continue with art, it sort of put me off. Um, and then, so I was 19 when I left college, and then shortly after that I did fall pregnant with my son. Um, and I did do a little bit of digital art whilst I was pregnant with him. Um, I tried to go into sort of like dark arts kind of stuff, which I may post one day. Um, I was very inspired by God Machine and Christopher Lavelle um, and wanted to sort of go into that style of art. Um, and then fast forward a few years, um, <laughs> this is how it all started with commissions, was um, I was, lots of people were asking um, in horse groups to for people to draw their horses and I was constantly tagged and I was like no I can't do that I can't um, draw realistically at all and then um, out of curiosity I started to draw my own horses um, and there was this one drawing of Cookie I did which I will post in this video um, so you can all see him um, and I was really proud of it and I posted um, that one in groups and people loved it. I thought, oh, maybe I could try it. And then I sort of went off the idea and I left it for a while. Um, and then I had taken a fall off my other horse diamond and completely wrecked my riding hat. Um, so I, def I desperately needed a new riding hat and um, I couldn't quite afford it at the time. And then another person posted in horse groups and said um, that they were looking for a horse portrait. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll try it, I'll give this a go. Um, I posted the photo of Cookie I did in the horse groups and I said, would anyone like a portrait for £10? Yeah, £10. I started off um, with this graphite drawing. Um, and I had an influx of people and I think I had six orders straight away. So that was my riding hat paid off, um, straight off. So I set up a page and um, I just kept on taking orders then and I thought wow I can really make some money from this um, and I was still only charging about 10-20 pounds a portrait um, and then it sort of just went from there, it's kind of a blur, um, I just kept on taking orders and I was getting really busy um, 
and then I started upping my prices and my page started taking off um, and I was getting loads of orders and for a few months I just stuck with graphite then and I was like oh this is really cool and I was doing like one commission every two weeks because I was still um my son was still very young um so I didn't get much free time and then I think it was around the Christmas time then um people started asking if I would do colored pencil and I was like oh I'm not really sure I've never drawn um realism with colored pencil before um so I said I'd have um, a practice and see if I could um and I drew a portrait of cookie with colour pencil. Cookie was always my go-to subject. Um, and then I started taking on colour pencil commissions. Um, and I'll post my first colour pe pencil commission. You might have all seen it. Um, I posted quite a lot on my Facebook. This was my first ever colour pencil commission. Um, and then I just started getting lots of requests for the colour pencil then. Um, so I still did graphite and colour pencil. And then I started looking, I was using WH Smith pencils and I was um, looking at uh, other colour pencil artists then for inspiration to see how they use colour pencils. Um, and that's when I saw Jessica Lennox and I was blown away by her work. Um, she was always the first colour pencil artist that inspired me um, to keep going with colour pencil. And I wanted to strive to get the realism and texture that she got. So I started like following her um, and then I'd follow a few other artists and then I'd hear them talking about the polychromos pencils um, so I invested in those and started using those and then I was looking at all different um, papers and I was looking at techniques um, and then I wanted to really um, grow my skills with colour pencils. I really wanted to create all this realism that I was seeing other artists. I didn't want to just create standard um, colour pencil portraits that I was currently doing. I really wanted to get that realism look. Um, and so I started researching then um, all different techniques, how you were supposed to use pencils properly. Um, and I watched a few tutorials on YouTube. Um, mainly Amy Howard. I think her tutorials are amazing. So I'll pop her um, link to her channel in this video as well because she is an excellent artist um, and a really good teacher as well. So I learned some of the basics from Amy's videos and then I sort of just went off by myself and started really um, developing my style, really trying to um, create this realism, um, learning to build my layers. Um, and figuring out like with each portrait where I needed to improve what wasn't working, what was working, um, trying to build my knowledge of the colours that work together. Um, so yeah, that is my journey on being an artist. So it all started because I wanted a new riding hat, funnily enough. Um, yeah, so I, tr I was thinking about it for a long time before I ever started and I never thought I could do it. I thought nobody's going to pay me for my art. Um, I remember being a young child and everyone would ask what I want to be when you grow up, you know, the, the usual questions. Um, and I'd always think in my head I would love to be an artist. <laughs> but me being really naive, I thought when I was a young child that if you wanted to be an artist and sell your work you had to be famous. I was like, I'm not going to be famous. Nobody's going to buy my work unless I'm famous. No, I'm not going to be famous. So I don't, I don't think I could be an artist. So I never actually tried. I enjoyed doing my art. Um, the only way I thought I could sell my art was if I be a tattooist. So from the ages of like 15 to 19, I had this idea in my head of becoming a tattoo artist. Um, so that's why I went to art college and stuck with art. Um, but then... Once I had my son, I sort of went off the idea of becoming a tattoo artist um, and it was getting such um, a big industry and it was really taking off tattoo artists and it was really hard to get yourself noticed because there was so many out there. And I sort of just thought, no, it's not really for me. Um, and I'm very much a 
um, introvert person. I like being on my own, and I think the tattoo industry, you need to be a people person, don't you? Um, so that put me off as well. But yeah, I never ever expected this to take off as well as it did. Um, all because I wanted a new riding hat and I thought, fine, I'll see if somebody will pay me £10 to draw their horse. And now it's taken off to a full-time business, um, which I am always super, super, super grateful for. Um, I get to do my dream job that I never thought I could do. Um, so I really need to start believing in myself. Um, and if you want to do something, try it. You don't have to be famous for people to buy your work like I naively thought as a young child. So yeah, that is um, my little story on how I became an artist. And I've tried a few mediums. Um, I did try pastels as well lately. Um, well, not lately. I think last year I tried. And I really can't get the hang of pencils at all. I've seen some incredible pens um, pastel work. But it's just not for me. I can't get like the details in um, and I hate the mess. Um, they get they're really chalky and powdery and I just can't no it's not for me. Um, I really want to try oil painting but again that would be buying a whole new set of art materials and I've just recently splurged on the Derwent Lightfast pencils so I haven't really got the funds to try out a new medium just yet, but that is something that I do want to try eventually. So after, um, like, I think four years then of doing colour pencil portraits, um, I really wanted to try my own YouTube channel, um, but never had the confidence. So I was like, no, there's so many amazing artists, um, Nobody's going to choose to watch my videos over their videos and I was really nervous that I'd be like heavily judged by other artists and like <laughs> them wondering why is she doing videos, um, nobody's going to watch her videos, why is why is she trying? I had, I get a lot of self-doubt um, and I did try it last year and I uploaded a few videos and then I sort of, my confidence went with them again. Um, and I started comparing myself to other art videos and I thought, no, mine are not nowhere near good enough. Um, and then I stopped for a long time. Um, and I had a few like filming issues as well, um, like technology issues. And it sort of knocked my confidence and I just thought, no, I'm not doing it anymore. And then this year I thought, no, I, I am going to try again. Um, and I had a lot of help this time um, with friends, um, boyfriend helping me um, learn how to record, learn how to edit properly, get my audio sounding good and so I'm really grateful to those guys for pushing me and helping me and now my YouTube is starting to grow and I'm actually really enjoying it. When I first started doing YouTube I wasn't enjoying it, I put too much pressure on myself um, to get a video out each week and trying to make that video as best as I could and professional as I could um, but now I'm sort of in the mindset of just just try it, just give it a go. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but you've tried. Rather than, no, it must be perfect, everyone must like it. Um, so yeah, and then the same with Patreon. Um, that has recently started, and I'm amazed with how well that is going. Um, I had a lot more people sign up than I initially expected, so I'm really pleased with that. Um, and that's something I wanted to do last year, um, because I had an influx of people asking me for Patreon. Um, and I really wanted to offer it, but again, it was my confidence and self-doubt. And I was just like, no, because nobody's going to sign up, why would people want to pay for them? Um, other artists will be judging me for trying to do Patreon as well as those doing Patreon. Um, but yeah, you've just got to give it a go. Um, all about just trying it. And if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work, and at least you tried. Yeah, that's my little story. Um, and now I've got loads of videos to edit. Um, I've just recently started the Bumblebee, which I'm super excited to draw. Um, that's another uh, story for just giving it a go. When I saw the reference, 
um, I really, really wanted to use it, and I th and um, it was from a friend on Facebook, and I was so nervous to ask him if I could use his photo. I put it off for ages, um, and then I finally plucked up the courage to ask him if he'd mind me using the reference photo, and he said yes straight away, and he was really happy um, that I wanted to use it, um, and he said how much he loved my work. So that's another story of just give it a go, you never know. So I just filmed um, the start of that bumblebee this morning and I did a full um, sort of walkthrough, like I was talking as I was drawing it, saying um, exactly what I was doing, um, all the techniques and colours I was using, what parts I was drawing. So that um, will be edited later today and up on my Patreon. Um, I'll leave my Patreon link in the comments below if any of you would like to check out my Patreon channel. Um, there's, you get at least one tutorial a month um, on a specific subject, so the tutorial this month was the dog's nose, so how to draw a realistic dog's nose, um, and then I am doing the bumblebee as well this month, so you technically get two this month. Um, I'll be uploading the bumblebee as I go, um, so it'll be like uploaded in parts from where I'm working on him. Um, so part one will be out this weekend. And then um, my top tier then is for all the business advice. So after five years of growing my business, um, I have learned a lot um, and my business is still growing, my social media is still growing. Um, so I'll be given um, like posts of hints, advice, tips, um, videos on how I grew my social media, what I know works, what I know doesn't work. Um, and all sorts like that. So that's my top tier. Um, so yeah, check it out if you're interested in learning those kinds of things from me, guys. So I'm going to finish up here. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this little video um, of me talking and drawing. I usually do live streams on my Facebook, but my internet has taken a big hit lately. Um, and I just cannot stream at the moment, so I'm just recording and then pressing upload and it takes forever to upload as well. So I thought this would be the next best thing. Um, and you can all watch it in your own time then. So I hope you've all enjoyed. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you don't like these sort of videos then that's fine. I will upload more um, uh, mini tutorials and time lapses to my channel too. So my channel hasn't changed to just me blabbering on and uploading. Um, there will be all sorts on my channel. Um, so I hope you've all enjoyed. I hope you all have a good day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys!